Hello, artists! Welcome back to the Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm Kelly Folsom, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. Thank you so much to all of you who have sent in requests for topics to be covered. Um, and keep that up. You can email in at info at artlifewithkelly.com if there's anything you'd like me to talk about in regards to this wonderful thing called the art life. <laughs> Today is episode number 14. Can you believe it? Episode number 14. Yay! Go us! All right. We are changing things, people. We are changing the artist narrative, and I'm so excited about it. Okay, and we're just bringing more awareness as well to the artist narrative. All right, so episode number 14, we're going to be talking about what to do when you're not seeing results fast enough, when you're not getting the results fast enough. All right, those of you who maybe don't know very much about me, I am a very impatient person. (laughs) I'm not very patient. I like to see results very, very quickly. And um, I've been like this for a really long time. Like I remember when I first started playing uh, volleyball and basketball whenever I was in junior high. And I, well, number one, I was just really tiny and I didn't have any upper body strength. So that was, I had a lot of things not working in my favor um, in order to learn those skills. And um, I would get really frustrated, you know, get really frustrated. Ugh, everybody else is, you know, making their shots and getting better. And I can't even get the ball over the net, you know, in volleyball, I can't serve the ball even underhanded over the net. I'm so small. And um, so I would get really upset over not seeing the results that I wanted and fast enough. Um, and so I remember one time, you know, my mom telling me, well, I was like, I'm just going to quit. I'm not going to play anymore because I was just so frustrated, um, that I wasn't, you know, doing good enough. I didn't think that my results were lighting up with how much I was practicing. And of course, when I went and whined and complained about this to my mom, hoping to get some sympathy (laughs) or at least her approval to quit, um, she, she said, well, can't never did do nothing. So just get out there and keep practicing, you know? Um, and of course at the end of the day, I was never going to be a basketball star or a volleyball star, but I learned some really valuable lessons from those experiences. And that was to have some patience, like just to keep putting in the work, keep practicing. Um, but not only that, because, Whenever we are not seeing the results that we want to see fast enough, part of the problem could be that you're just not practicing enough or you're not doing deliberate enough practice when you are practicing, like focusing on one thing and trying to get better at that one thing. Um, that's, you know what I mean by deliberate practice, or for example, like whenever you go to do a painting, if you know that a weak spot of yours is, um, your paint quality or making deliberate brush strokes, then a deliberate intentional practice would be whenever you go to do a painting that you really try to think through every brush stroke and make a more deliberate brush stroke and not just go back to your old habits of like smoothing everything out or blending everything out, for example. So um, it could be that you're doing um, unintentional practice time, um, that you're really not you know, putting in the effort, you're kind of halfway there mentally and you're just kind of going through the motions, so to speak. Um, So that's why, you know, for example, in sports, we would always do like drills, things like that to really practice. Like we uh, do intentional practice around our shooting, around our serving uh, in volleyball and um, around our ball handling, around our passing, you know, we would kind of break these things down into these bite-sized chunks so that we could really just focus on that one skill, whether it's color mixing, paint handling, um, you know, so that's deliberate practice. And then even, for example, composition, like, um, you know, doing intentional study for composition and also doing paintings with the intentions of, 
um, analyzing your composition or comparing compositions and seeing which ones are better and why they're better so that you can try to understand how to set up compositions better. Um, I remember for me, my last year in art school, I had a lot of this deadline pressure of this final show and, um, I really wanted to have good work because it was a chance for me to sell work. Um, I didn't really buy into the idea that some superstar from New York City was going to come in and swoop me up and I would never have to ever worry about uh, selling my own paintings or anything like that. But that was like the myth that we got sold at the art school and of course it didn't happen for anybody. Um, but I knew like that the senior show always had um, a lot of people coming through, just a lot of local traffic, and I had had some success at um, what are the holiday student art shows, and so I really wanted to have some good work, and plus to sell, but also I identified that one of my weakest parts in my paintings were my compositions, and so I knew like I'm about to enter the real art world outside of art school and this is my weakest link this is my weakest point and so I really need to intentionally deliberately practice on this and study this and see if I can get better and so I I did that I I set aside and was like okay I just need to get better at my I was doing still life of course so I was like I need to get better at my still life setup so I started a started studying really good still life setups and comparing my paintings with their paintings to see like, well, why is their composition better than mine? Um, so that's intentional focus study, right? Like you have an outcome or an objective that you're trying to achieve, that you're trying to get, you're a result that you're trying to get better compositions, right? So if you don't identify what the result is, it's very difficult to even be able to do that intentional practice or intentional study. And so once I identified this is a problem, now there could have been 20 problems, uh, there was, you know, 20 weak spots, but I picked the one that I thought was the absolute, the one that made the most difference and was the weakest, those two things. Uh, one of my weaker skills and would make the most difference in helping me to, um, you know, reach a higher level of mastery in my work, get more uh, attention for my work, get into more shows, get more awards perhaps. And so I decided to deliberate, deliberately study and practice and focus on improving my compositions. And of course, that ended up being several years worth of study, but it paid off and in a big way because um, I understand composition now in all genres on a whole other level because I've spent so much time dealing with it, studying it, you know, trying to understand it. Does it mean that every composition I do is like, you know, home run? No, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> but, but I understand if it's not a home run, I can understand why it wasn't, you know, and sometimes I'm not I know it sounds weird to say sometimes I'm not going for a home run composition, but it's true, you know, um, especially like in my lessons and my teaching, you know, there, there, that's a whole other purpose uh, whenever I'm teaching than just, you know, making the most masterful art I could make. Like my, the purpose of those lessons is to teach and to teach well and to teach the fundamentals. So Anyway, so when you're not seeing the results that you want to see, that's the first thing is identifying, well, what are the results that you want to see? And then figuring out like, well, why are you not seeing them? What are the weak spots? What are the things that you need to concentrate on and focus on doing deliberate practice on them? Um, and of course, if you have a mentor um, or a teacher that is willing to give you that feedback, then you can ask their advice. You know, what do you see as being my biggest weak spot? You can ask your peers, uh, people that you trust, of course. But, you know, gosh, you could even ask the public. I mean, <laughs> you, you need to have a thick skin if you're going to do that because they're going to tell you, you know, but if you truly, really, if you truly want the truth, then you're going to um, ask and get the feedback so that you can get better, my friend. Here's to getting better. So the other thing about when you're not seeing results fast enough is so often we want the answers 
or the result without having to figure it out. We want the answer first. Just give me the answer. I don't want to figure all this crap out. Just give me the freaking answer. (laughs) Well, guess what? Like everybody wants that. But it's only the people that will actually put themselves through the figuring it out that get that answer. Whether they're getting help from other people or not, you still have to do the work yourself to figure it out. Like somebody can give you the answer and it is pointless because you're not putting it into practical application. So the other side of this impatience, um, which I definitely had um, as a starting art student, um, impatience with not seeing the results I wanted to see quick enough, um, it's like this sort of this thought or this idea, I just want this to be over with. I want this struggle to be over with. I want the pain of figuring this out to be over with. I just want the answers. And also like this belief that whenever you get there, whenever you get to the understanding or to the mastery, that you're never going to feel this way again or that you're never going to feel um, like insecure or, you know, low self-esteem around your work or any of that. Like, if I can get to here, if I can get this skill, if I can achieve this, then I won't ever feel like this again. And I have news for you. That's not really true. <laughs> um, it's really, really not true. Even even after I started um, you know, getting that, you know, level of mastery or that success. Now I will say it does help a little bit, you know, getting that, getting those achievements do help. Getting those, that external validation can help. It can help to a degree. I'm not going to say that it doesn't, but the problem that usually occurs, of course, is that you still, you're still left, you're still left with who you are. You know, you're still left with the same frustrations that you always feel or the same dissatisfaction perhaps that you have with yourself and your work. And really until you fix that, until you deal with that and accept that and come to grips with that and accept yourself more and love yourself where you're at, you know, Um, then, you know, you have to deal with that first because even whenever you get to mastery, if you haven't dealt with this piece, it's still going to be biting you in the ass, you know, uh, it will, it will, it's like this little gremlin that's just still there. So, so I encourage you, like if you're impatient right now, you feel like you're not seeing results fast enough. I would really question like, why does that bother me so much? Why is that? Why is that a problem? What am I hoping to gain by, you know, getting that result, whatever that result is? Um, So that's just a little psychological aspect of it that we think whenever we get there, we're not going to feel like this anymore. And I know in my experience, that just hasn't really been true. Um, So number one, of course, is just identifying, well, what is the result? Is there a specific result that you can identify? When we keep it vague, like that it's like this big vague thing you know it's very hard to pinpoint what you should be working on so you want to uh bring it into reality bring it into some sort of concrete reality uh something factual that you know um (laughs) that nobody can say isn't true right like something that's truly factual like oh you know my my color mixing skills are weak or my brush handling is weak you know something that's really factual something that's not like you just beating yourself up you know something that's objective um, and then you can start to work on those things intentionally and in a focused way to try to bring that skill up. And again, I would recommend you pick the skill that's going to make the most difference, um, move the needle the fastest and the farthest. I would say the gift for me in that impatience, um, because there's always an upside to uh, these kinds of problems, right? So there's always a gift to it. And for me, the gift has been that I, because I'm impatient to get results, that I tend to look for, I tend to try to distill down um, all these, you know, big ideas into like a focused, understandable thing. And it's also what's really helped me in my teaching is that I try to 
really get it down to clarity and simplicity and concise, you know, instead of like it being so confusing. Um, let's like get to the freaking point. What needs to happen here, you know, <laughs> um, kind of thing. So that's really the gift of having that impatience. And then also, uh, for me, it was a big driver, like that discomfort of not seeing the results that I wanted to see fast enough was a big motivator for me to figure it out. Like, let's figure it out. Come on. Like, that's, let's deal with this. So when I say like, accept who you are, ex- love yourself, where you are, who you are, it's not, I, I don't mean like just go settle in and go, well, you know, it'll come to me. It'll just happen. It's not a thing of apathy, you know, um, So that's not what I mean by that. I just mean like if you don't deal with that internal dissatisfaction, you're still going to have it when you reach mastery um, or a higher level of skill. It's still going to be there because guess what? You always raise the bar and you always want to get better. And um, so so the other thing that I would recommend like when you're not seeing results fast enough is get some help. Like get some um, get some outside help. I know for me, anytime I felt like I was getting into a plateau or just stagnated, then I would be like, all right, I need some more input. Like I need, I need some advice. I need some good instruction. I need somebody to show me my blind spots. What am I missing here? You know, um, a lot of what we need to do is just daily practice and, and deliberate practice, like daily deliberate practice to get to where we want to be in our skills. But then also sometimes you can't, you don't know what you don't know. You can't see your blind spots. So sometimes you need somebody to point it out to you. And of course it's helpful if they can point it out to you in a way that you've never, like in a way that you've never heard before or just in a different way so that it clicks better. Um, And sometimes hearing something over and over and over again from a teacher is really helpful because it doesn't always sink in the first time. So repetition of instruction, but not just repetition, like variety in the repetition. I know for teachers, they say like you have to uh, present something at least like seven times before somebody gets it, you know. Um, And I think variety in that presentation is important, like trying, getting with a teacher that tries to explain it in a number of different ways. They don't just have like, well, this is the one answer I always give. And, and if you don't get it, you just don't get it. Trust me, I've had lots of teachers like that. And it's hard. It's hard being a good teacher. You have to really have this motivation as a teacher that you really want the student to get it and you really want to help them to get it as much as you can. So some of you may just be studying with, you know, crappy teachers. So you may want to start looking like, is there somebody else I could learn from or study from? Or maybe they will say it in a different way that I will really get it because I'm just kind of tuning this person out now. Sometimes that happens as well. And you just need like a fresh perspective or a fresh point of view. Um, so that's what I used to do would be like, okay, I'm going to sign up for a workshop or go take this class, um, whether it's online or in person so that I can get some fresh perspective, some fresh, um, feedback from somebody. Um, so that's another thing that you can do whenever you're not seeing results fast enough that will really help move the needle forward, you know, farther for you. Um, the other thing this would be, you know, tip number four, (laughs) when you're not seeing results fast enough, and that is tracking your results, tracking your progress. It's really hard for us to hold in our memory, like how far we've come. So sometimes we just have a dissatisfaction with where we are because we have forgotten where we were. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hello. You know, if this happens like in all areas of our life, it's hard for us to remember uh, a month ago, gosh, I can't even remember what I was doing a month ago, three months ago, a year ago, three years ago, five years ago. It's hard to hold all of that in this little memory bank we have up here. Um, And we just, we don't really have space to hold it either. So 
one and this this became abundantly clear to me at the end of my freshman year in art school because we were about to have to put up our work for a review. It was called freshman review. The teach we were supposed to hang it up in front of everybody. Scary. And um, all the instructors were going to give us this formal formal grade in this formal letter. Um, it was supposed to include feedback, you know, what we were doing well, what we um, needed to improve the most, you know. And so this is supposed to be a good thing, right? But because I was in the first year of art school and my self-confidence was like this tall, it was like as tall as an ant. It was so tiny, tiny, tiny little ant of self-confidence. So I totally was not seeing how beneficial this was and I was really afraid and frightened to have my work criticized, to have it rejected. I was terrified that everybody was just gonna, you know, be walking by my work laughing, ha ha ha, look at her crappy painting, you know. So I was kind of like playing up all this drama in my head. And um, and I, I was complaining to my boyfriend, uh, Monty, uh, that, uh, gosh, and this was, what, 13 years ago? So I was just whining and complaining, very similar to my mom, you know, over the basketball stuff. I'm going to quit. I'm just not good enough, you know. I'm not getting good enough, fast enough. Everybody's better than me kind of stuff. And so I was, you know, doing this, you know, letting, spewing all this out, which is fine to do. And um, so, so he said, hey, tonight, whenever you come over for dinner, can you bring all of the paintings that you have from this year? I was like, oh my gosh. He was like, and we'll go through them together. So sweet, right? He also told me to get over myself as well. So maybe <laughs> a little tough love in there too. But he said, you know, bring all your paintings over together. We'll go through them together. Let's just, let's really look at them. Let's go through and let's pick together, you know, what you're going to put up for freshman review. So, and he specifically said, bring all, everything, you know, every painting that you've done at, in this school year, you know, in class, independent paintings, all that stuff. So I brought them all over. And of course, I'm still, you know, pity party, mopey, frustrated. And, and so after dinner, um, he had this big kind of wraparound couch at the time and he said, okay, he started lining them up. He said, okay, which ones did, which ones are the first paintings? So we lined them up from the very first painting I did to the last newest painting I did. And they were all lined up around this wraparound navy blue chenille couch. <laughs> I remember it so clearly. And just like after he did that, after he lined them all up, I could see instantly I mean, what a genius he was for doing this because I could see immediately, instantly, oh my God, I have come so far. Still makes me cry because it was such an emotional, it was such a transformative experience in that moment. Um, I just, I saw like beginning to end the progress that I had made and not comparing myself to anybody else, but really just looking at like my progress. This is what I've done this year. And I really, really have made progress. So whether or not I'm as good as so-and-so over here, doesn't matter. I am getting better at this and I am making progress. So the point of that story is to illustrate to you the power of tracking your results. So my friends, please, please do that for yourselves, especially if you're somebody like I was who's very hard on yourself, very self-critical, um, and um, you feel like you're not growing fast enough. Uh, like I said, on the one hand, there is a blessing in that because it can really push you, but be careful because it can push you in a very hard way, in a very mean way. So you want to make sure that it doesn't get too, too mean and too hard on yourself, right? But the other side of this is that you want to track your results. So However you can do that, whether it's taking photographic um, evidence of your paintings or like me, if you have 
all of your paintings there. Um, so that's why I think it's important that you don't throw too much of your, your work away right away, that you do try to keep it and keep record of it, take photos of it. Um, there's some, some work I don't have record of from those early days that I still wish I had, you know, that I threw in the trash or got rid of and because they were just so horrible. But now I wish I had them so I could look back on it and just see like really truly how much I've been able to grow as an artist and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it gives you the motivation to go, okay, we, we got this, we got this, we're doing good. Like one foot in front of the other, let's, let's pick ourselves up tomorrow. And also it's giving yourself credit and celebrating and rewarding yourself for the work that you've done. So my caution to you on earlier about it being hard and mean is that anything that we don't reward, we don't want to continue to do. So if we're always just punishing ourselves for the progress that we're not making or we think we're not making because we're not tracking it, then um, yeah, we'll end up wanting to give up because who can stand up that long under pressure? I mean, some of us were raised um, or maybe had some abusive, traumatic childhoods like myself. So so you're kind of used to that abuse. You know, you're used to that trauma. And so you, you, you can stand up underneath it for a longer period of time. But eventually, everybody will crumble under that, you know. So that hate and, and uh, that self-hate can never, you know, uh, lead to a good result. It can never lead to a, a loving result on the other side. So I just want to leave you with that thought. Hopefully these tips and tools, really tools, will help you whenever you get in those times and places where you feel like you're not progressing um, fast enough. There's always a way to kind of speed up your progress, I believe. And I have, you know, used a lot of these ways to speed up my progress. Um, oftentimes people will say like, wow, you know, you've come so far in such a short time. And, um, so I do believe there are, you know, hacks or whatever you want to call it, ways to shortcut our processes and learning. You can only speed it up so much though. So it's really critical for us to be loving and caring towards ourselves and also give ourselves the credit for the credit we deserve for the progress that we have made and how far we have come. There's a quote that I love that I'll leave you with and I don't know who it's from but is saying a quote um, that we we underestimate what we can do uh, in three years time or five years time and we overestimate what we can do in one year and so it just kind of illustrates that shift in focus that needs to take place like you can do so much in three years or five years it will freaking blow your mind like if you are like i my mind my own mind is blown by my progress in the last three years in my art business it is um, phenomenal it's it's nothing short of phenomenal but it's made up of daily commitment, daily work, daily doingness of um, the hard things and the things that suck sometimes to do, right? Okay, my friends, I hope this has helped you and I'm wishing you all much, much love. Please be um, gentle with yourselves, um, but also get what the heck you want too, my friend, just in a loving, more gentle way to yourself and wishing you happy painting and I'll see you at the next episode of Art Life Conversations. Feel free to reach out at info at artlifewithkelly.com or visit artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I dot com um, to um, reach out or check out anything that I have to offer and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.